Hey, thank you for watching this video. There's more online at Embark Online. You can tweet me, and of course, here's the pie guy. All right, this is first grade, module six, lesson 18. And in this lesson, students, uh, technically we've moved into a new topic in, in the book, in the module. Uh, but really, this lesson is just more of the same of what we've been doing, which is practicing the variety of strategies that student, we want students to have at their disposal for adding a pair of two-digit numbers. So uh, we have a lot of non-standard algorithms, a lot of number sense-based strategies, plus we've been leading the whole time towards that standard algorithm. And this is an opportunity for students to just pick and choose uh, which method they want to use as um, as they see fit based on what numbers they're looking at. So let's get started. So this is a screenshot straight from the teacher's edition, which is really uh, giving a sample of four different techniques for adding 58 plus 37. And these are not the only four, but these are four of the more common ones. This one, we're making a 10. So we're going from 58 to 60 by adding 2 and then continuing on. So we're decomposing the second add end strategically to make a friendly number, a landmark number. Uh, let's see, uh, B right here. Um, again, we're, we're decomposing, but we're not really decomposing to make a 10. Now we're just decomposing into 10s and 1s, and then adding the 58 plus the 30 to get 88, and then we're adding in the remaining 7. So that's another strategy. Here's another strategy. This is where we start to move towards that standard algorithm where we're thinking about quick 10s, we're modeling 58 as 5 tens, 8 ones, and 37 as 3 tens, 7 ones. And then we are <clears throat> adding, and we are kind of mimicking in a pictorial way that abstract algorithm right here. The one thing I noticed, though, is, let's see, this one, I don't know if this was intended, uh, but we've got, we've got something wrong, don't we? We have 58 plus 37. And the idea is, wait a second, is our answer really 85? Well, we know that eight ones plus two more ones, that gives us a 10. That gives us, and I'm going to circle that in green. So this is a 10 right here. And that means we have five ones left over. So what do we have? Well, we no longer have five plus three, for, uh, which is eight tens because we have this extra one, this ninth one right here. So we don't really have eight tens. We really should have nine tens. So our answer is 95. So ideally, if we were way over here, eight plus seven is 15. So that's five ones and an extra 10. So it's a... a an extra 10 plus the five ones, that's what eight plus seven is, it's 15. So now we have five tens plus three tens plus one 10, which gives us not eight tens, but nine tens. So the answer is 95. Now, I, I didn't read the teacher edition close. It, it may be they did that on purpose. Uh, maybe the students are supposed to identify which, um, which method was done incorrectly. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Just heads up on that one when you read the teacher edition. And then the last method here is, of course, decomposing both numbers into tens and ones, and then adding the tens together, adding the ones together, and then adding those two subtotals together. So we got a lot of different methods, and right now we don't really care which methods the students choose. In fact, we like all of them because they're all number sense. They all make sense you know, numerically, like um, none of them are just rote memorization. We really want to get in our students the habit of understanding what's going on rather than just rotely following some rules. So the idea is then give your students plenty of opportunities to just practice whatever strategy they want. There's at least four different strategies. Let them pick and choose what method they want to use for each problem. If they want to use one system over and over and over, we can do that. 
Uh, but we do also want to encourage students to be flexible in their thinking and uh, really be thoughtful about what strategies so that maybe they can minimize the amount of work they're doing, be efficient. For example, this problem, hmm, I see really this is 60 and 1, I see this is uh, 10 and 5, I can almost do that in my head, 60 plus 10 is 70, 1 plus 5 is 6, so our answer is 76. All right, that's a good method. We may ask, we might ask our students to write it down like this. 60 plus 10 is 70. 1 plus 5 equals 6. And then 70 plus 6 is 76. This, though, is really just writing down the mental math that eventually we want our students to be doing. So uh, parents and teachers don't freak out about how much writing this is. This is just a way to notate on paper what's going on in the student's brain. Eventually, we don't want them to write that stuff down at all. So that's just the biggie about this lesson is continuing to remind our students that they have a lot of different techniques to, to choose from and uh, for them to enjoy the choice that they've been given. And that wraps up first grade module six, lesson 18, where students are adding two two-digit numbers, but they're using a variety of different strategies and recording methods. Um, ideally, we're going to be leading towards that standard algorithm, but at this point, we're just celebrating all the choice that our students have. And one choice that you also have is whether you choose to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.